What is going on guys? My name is Andres Montero and by the looks of it, you clicked on this video because you want a beginner workout and it's gonna be full body. So unlike other workouts, we're not gonna use any gym equipment, we're not gonna use any cool machines, any benches, nothing like that. Instead, all you're gonna need is a backpack, go around your apartment or your house and fill it up with anything that you can. So my backpack is filled with tons of goodies. I have my textbooks in here, I have my computer, um, everything that I could find. So this is like, I wanna say probably close to like 10, 15 pounds and that's all we're gonna need for today. Um, just before we start, so a couple of things to remember is if you need a break, don't be afraid to pause the video. Um, if you need explanations, what I'm gonna be doing is in between each exercise, breaking down some movements um, and stuff like that. So without any further ado, we're gonna begin uh, with a light warm up. So put your backpack aside and all we're gonna do is start with some very easy high, high knee marches. You're just gonna go just, just to warm up the body. We don't wanna go right into it. We're gonna go for just about 30 seconds, starting now. Remember this whole time, what we're gonna do is try and aim to get our knee above our waistline. And we want our upper body to stay straight. We don't wanna hunch over, you don't wanna lean too far back. Instead, all we're doing is just raising our knees up to our waist. Just about 15 seconds in. <clears throat> Whole time we're going, light taps, keep it going, keep it moving. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. And now we're gonna start to ramp it up a little. We're gonna do some skips, very light, find your own rhythm. Don't be afraid to become uncomfortable. We're just gonna skip now. 30 seconds, starting now. Here we go, 15 seconds in. Whole time, same thing. You wanna keep that knee drive going up. Quick exchange on the bottom. You don't wanna keep your feet planted for too, too long. There we go, 10 more seconds. And three, two, one, perfect. If you need a quick breather, pause the video now. If not, I'm gonna to begin to move on. So, for the full body experience, you're gonna take your backpack and we're gonna start with working our backside right here, these big old muscles. You're gonna take your backpack, grab it however you would like, and we're gonna do what's called bent over rows. About feet shoulder width, <clears throat> the healthy bend in the knees, you're gonna bend over just a little, and all you're gonna do is take your backpack and just row towards your stomach. You're gonna go for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, perfect. Lay that backpack down. We're gonna do a quick breather for just about 30 seconds. So it's important to remember when you're doing bent over rows, you don't wanna have your lower back kicking in. So you're gonna keep that healthy bend in the knees and you wanna keep a proud chest. So in my case, if you look at the M here, I would want someone standing in front of me to be able to read the M. I don't wanna have my back hunched over or too far back instead. Pushing our hips back, a nice healthy bend, and all we do is row towards our belly button. Remember, always leading with elbows. We're gonna become active in just about 10 more seconds. Get your backpacks ready. There we go. And three, two, and one. You're gonna have your knees bent. You're gonna row towards your belly button again. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect. Put that backpack down. Remember, if you need to, pause the video. If not, I'm gonna take a quick breather for about 30 seconds, and then we're gonna move on to the uh, backpack laying down press. It's kind of a mix of jam, but all you need to know is we're just gonna be laying down on our backs and we're gonna be pushing. So instead of working out our back, we're gonna be moving more towards the front side, towards our chest, shoulders, and our backside triceps. Um, again, if you need to, pause the video for a break. I'm gonna begin in about five more seconds. Ugh. Just about now, you should be like a little tired. I know I am. I'm getting real sweaty, it's very hot right now. And so we're gonna start in three, two, and one. So lay down, 
You have your feet planted firmly. You're just going to press up using the backpack. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Perfect. So while I put that backpack down, I'm going to come over and explain to you guys some major points that you want to always remember. When you're laying down, you want to always keep it in constant contact with the back of your head, upper back, your butt, and your feet. You never want any of those positions to kind of raise up into the air. Um, also, when you're pressing, it should be very slow. You shouldn't be just kind of driving the weight or else you have a higher chance of injury. Um, especially for these cases, if you would like to make them a little harder, if you have a couch, what you can do is lay down on the couch, keep your upper body on, and you can create more of an incline type of uh, press. Um, if it's a little too difficult, don't be afraid to turn around and just do push-ups. Those are definitely always viable and very difficult if you uh, decide to make them difficult. So we're gonna be starting again in just about 10 more seconds. Catch your breath if you need to, pause the video, don't worry. <sighs> Woo. We're gonna start in three, two, one. And for those of you that are gonna do the kind of more difficult version, I'll do that with you. All you're gonna do is just lay down, create the incline, and you're just gonna press 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect. So now we have worked out two of our main body parts. We've worked out our chest, we've worked out our back. Now we're gonna move on to everyone's favorite, the legs. Now legs can become very difficult, so now would be the time where you wanna pause, get a drink if you have to, um, and just make sure that you're fully prepared. Uh, one of the biggest things to remember is if you feel any pain, uh, stuff that is kind of hurting in between your rest times, please stop. Um, if you, you should be feeling almost like a, a little bit of a burn in your muscles, nothing ever too, too difficult. Um, and the biggest thing to remember is that all we're trying to do is just get moving and kind of separate ourselves from sitting on the couch all day. So what we're going to do is it's called goblet squats or in fancier terms, holding weight in front of you and just squatting. Um, personally, I enjoy squatting to a couch um, because if I get too low, my hip hurts um, and that could be like much of you guys out there. So in just about 10 more seconds, we're going to start our body weight squats. Um, if you would like to make the things more difficult, grab that weight, hold that backpack in front of you. Um, a regression here or someone if you, if you uh, struggle with squats is uh, pretty cool is you can actually just pull your backpack um, while you walk around the apartment. Those are always viable options. Um, and always getting those legs working. So in just about three, two, and one, we're gonna take your backpack, hold it out where you feel comfortable, and you're just gonna squat to the couch. So we're gonna do 10 reps. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, and one. Perfect. That is our first set of squats done. Now, just some key pointers uh, while you do your squats is to always make sure that you keep the full part of your foot planted in the ground. So what I mean is if this is the floor, your entire foot's on the ground. You don't want your tippy toes coming up. You don't want your heels coming up because I can put you in a more injury prone position. Next biggest thing is making sure that when you're squatting, you wanna keep those knees from caving in. You wanna keep them pushing out. If you cave them in, that can cause a lot of damage, especially in that front part of your knees. So that my biggest tip is kind of follow where your second and third toe are, are uh, pointing. So if they're pointing out, you're gonna always squat and drive those knees outward. All right, Woo. We're gonna go in just about 10 more seconds. So I'm gonna focus on kind of driving my knees out. I felt like they started to cave in, um, especially after kind of messing up my hip a little. So we're gonna go in five, four, three, two, and one. Remember, 10 reps, that's all we're gonna do. Drive those knees out. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, 
five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect. So now we have hit our back, we've hit our chest, and we've hit our front part of our legs. Now the most difficult part is kind of figuring out how can we work this backside here. Um, that's gonna be more of your hinge movements, that's gonna be movements where you're kind of moving your hips back, pushing them forward. Uh, stuff like picking up groceries from the ground, that can be very difficult as you get older, so this is why it's so important to make sure you get your hinge movements down uh, to prevent yourself from being injured. So in just about 15 seconds or so, uh, we're gonna do something called a deadlift. It's kind of in the name, it's dead weight and you're just gonna lift it up. Uh, so the biggest things to remember here is as you lift, you wanna make sure you keep that back nice and straight. Remember I said you wanna make sure people are reading the end, you don't wanna crunch your, your chest down and you don't wanna to be too high up where you kinda of have this awkward little arch. Instead, what you're gonna do is keep that chin tucked and the first movement is driving those hips back towards the other wall. Right, you see here, healthy bend in the knees, push those hips far back as you can. And with the hands, T-Rex arms, nice and straight, push them back, grab the weight up, and that's one rep. So we're gonna start in three, two, and one. Remember, drive those hips back, hips back, hips back, up with the weight. Going down to the, to the backpack touches the ground, back up. That's two. Down. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Perfect. Drop the right back down. Remember, if you need to, pause the video if you need to catch your breath. I am currently getting the workout in, if I'm being honest, I'm very sweaty. Um, and we just have about one more set of the deadlifts, uh, which means doing the movement one more time in total. And then we're gonna go into our last section, which is working out our core and our stomachs. Um, so some big things uh, before we continue the deadlifts is to always make sure that when you're picking up the weight, uh, you're always keeping that, that back neutral as I was explaining. Um, because a lot of people, especially as we get older, or if we're kind of picking up some serious heavy amounts of like groceries or anything like that, we can actually pull our back. And it's a very common thing and a common issue that a lot of us will face. Um, so that's why it's always important to practice your deadlifts and kind of make sure that we keep that uh, motion active. So with all of that said, in 10 seconds, we're gonna go right back into it. Trust me, I know it's getting a little difficult, but just imagine yourself right now, you're climbing up that mountain, you're almost at the top. Whew. We're gonna go in three, Two, and one, push those hips back, drive back up. Go in, that's one. Two, push those hips back. Three, four, five, almost there. Six, you can do it. Seven, eight, nine, last one, best one, 10. Perfect, drop that weight. We're done using those. So, we've worked out our chest, we've worked out our back, front side of our legs, back side of our legs. So now there's one last part missing. We're gonna get into that. Um, and usually people will do planks, which is totally awesome, it's perfect. Uh, personally, I struggle a lot with planks with my shoulder kind of being hurt. So what we're gonna do is kind of a different, different kind of variation. Um, and instead of it being very, um, contraction oriented, it's almost like a stretch. Uh, these are called bird dogs. They're very good for your back, for your core, and kind of just stretching out the rest of the body out. Um, and what we're gonna do is just five of them. I want you to imagine if you were making a business deal, you're just gonna stretch your hands out as far as you can and shake that person's hand. So I'm gonna go into the back. We're gonna do five each side and we're done after that. So with bird dogs, the biggest thing to remember is if you need to, you can drop down onto your knees. You're gonna start in the all fours position and you're gonna keep that back straight again. All we're gonna do is opposite hand, opposite leg. So if my right hand's coming out, our left leg's gonna kick back. You're just gonna kick it out. Remember how I said shake that hand? You're gonna shake that hand, bring it back. That's one, same thing. 
back, that's two, same thing, back out, three, back out, four, and five. The whole time before we switch to the next side, make sure you're breathing, catch your breath. This is kind of like our, I guess you could say, cool down in the moments where we can kind of focus on making sure we feel that stretch, feel the contraction, kind of get that stomach kind of rolling. Uh, so now we're gonna switch hands. So now it's gonna be my left side. Left hand's coming out, right leg's kicking back. Whole time, going out, stretch, shake that hand, back down. That's one, two, three, four, and reach, five. Perfect. So now we've worked out chest, back, front leg, back leg, and our core. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely feeling it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed your workout, especially our little break from uh, the Netflix binge that we were totally on. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much.